Hello, and welcome back to another episode of GT and H. I made an elevator, as you can see. Uh, I made an elevator all the way up to here so that I can use the hang glider more efficiently. Um, something I did on the last episode, I made some uh, polytetrafluoroethylene sheets. So with these ones, you can make uh, a lot of really nice things. And mostly what I was going for is the ender IO pipes for fluid moving. Yeah, so the ender fluid conduits. I want to make those. And to make those, you need tiny PTFE fluid pipes. And the PTFE is polytetrafluoroethylene. And so I made a bunch of that. And as well as that, I want to make a bunch of large chemical reactors to actually make more polytetrafluoroethylene so I can make more chemical reactors and stuff. So... I was thinking, I don't want to use all of it to make the pipes. I want to use some of it. And so I think a stack of the pipes should be able to make two stacks of these pipes and therefore two stacks of the Android conduits. And so I also needed uh, two stacks of vibrant alloy, which itself is energetic alloy, ender eye dust and chrome. And the ender eye dust is basically just the blaze powder plus the ender pearls, crushed ender pearls, energetic alloy though is conductive iron gold and black steel conductive iron is redstone alloy iron dust and silver and the black steel is black bronze nickel and steel and the black bronze is electrum and copper so it's quite quite the rabbit hole i would say uh, just to get some uh, just to get some vibrant alloy but i i went through the whole process and i actually got enough uh, vibrant alloy to do it i got two stacks so I just need to make these into plates. Should not be an issue at all. It's just going to take a while for these to process. Um, another thing I need to do is I need to make it into the pulp. I need these uh, sheets into pulp, which I just macerate them. Easy as that. And then with these pulp, I can extrude it into the tiny pipe shape. Tiny pipe. This and that. There we go. Oh, look how fast that is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> nice. And then these together with some uh, polyethylene, you can make ender fluid conduits. Very nice. Just waiting for that. Uh, while I'm waiting for that, I suppose I could talk about this. I did start to prepare an area. Like this is where I used to have a lot of LV machines. And now I only have like six here. Um, I, did, I did put down uh, some super tanks. And I started planning out some stuff of how I want to store the all the chemicals and stuff, right? And I found this thing, which is a cover that shows you visually on the side how full a tank is and what kind of fluid it is. Because, like, water is going to be, like, this bluish, right? It, it actually shows the, the, the right texture. It adapts. And it shows the fill percentage as well. So, I have the name, water, and I have the cover here. And I made a bunch of these. This is the fluid detector covers you make into fluid storage monitor covers. And you need computer monitor covers for that. And that's just some aluminum, some glass, and some dyes, basically. Really, not that expensive. But the, yeah, the fluid detector covers as well is, like, just the, some weighted pressure plates and just the iron, basically. And, yeah, it's, it's not it's not that bad. It's not that bad. A bit annoying, as anything in GTNH. It's a bit annoying. But then I can just put these down on some super tanks that then I can later on assign specific, uh, specific fluids that I want to store there, right? So right now I'm thinking about water like being the first one because that's like, it's very essential, I would say. Uh, and then it's like oxygen, hydrogen, you get those from water and then steam and and then basically go into all the oil products, I think. Because I think, I think it's going to be easier to to uh, move fluids around with the ender, ender area pipes and these uh, super tanks. And for now, I think super tank ones should be fine as well, I think. I, I, I could upgrade some specific ones to Super Tanks 2 as well, I suppose. But that needs more Vibrant Alloy. So yeah, that's 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 that. Uh, and I started planning out the signs. Here I'm using like bold as a thing as well. I don't know which one looks better. If, if normal text looks better or bold text looks better. I'm leaning more towards bold because you can see it from like slightly further away. Like what it is exactly. So that's that's just that. Okay, so Vibrant Alloy Plates. Um, I did make a, assign a new backpack just for fluid cells because the other other backpacks, the other the electronic backpack was filling up with random stuff that I yeah I didn't have enough space there basically. 
So I just need some polyethylene over here. So what is the circuit? There is no circuit. You just put it in. So do that, do that. And it's making stuff. Yeah, I'll make two stacks. Nice. Ender fluid conduit. Instant fluid teleportation allows multiple fluids to be transported on the same line. This is amazing. This is genuinely, genuinely amazing. Can't wait for that to be done. Yeah, I guess I'll just uh, wait for these to process and do something else in the meantime. I will look into the large chemical reactors and the distillation tower thing as well, I think. So to make a large chemical reactor, you need two large PTFE fluid pipes, as well as in the actual structure, as you can see here. Uh, layer one is this. Layer two is a PTFE pipe casing as well. So I need one of these, which is more pipes and a frame for that. Okay, okay. Now this is getting a bit more annoying than I previously thought. So each each machine needs one of these, extruding more of that. And then what about the case itself? The frame box? I guess it's just this. Not that bad. Okay. So I think the first, the very, very first thing I need to make, the first setup I need to make is an automation setup to make more poly tetrafluoroethylene, just to be able to make more of these reactors or other things that aren't this. And from now on, I think I'll just start saying PTFE, not even, not even that. Like whenever I do write it down, I think I'm just going to say PTFE and stuff. No more, no more, no more full chemical name. But uh, the, the basic idea is uh, I would need uh, how many reactors to make this full setup? So this would be, I guess I could start counting here as well. So to get the actual final result, you need one. Uh, then the step before that, that is another one. To get hydrofluoric is hydrogen and fluorine. That's another one. And to get chloroform is methane and chlorine, which is another one. So I need four. I think I can do this. I think I should be fine. What about, what about hydrochloric? Can I use it somewhere uh, easily? I think I, I think I might just store it in, uh, at first. As it is like used in a lot of things later on, right? So, so that's four large chemical reactors, which means I'm going to need four of these at least. It means 16 pipes. Which means... Four boxes, which means 16 rods, means 8 plus 48 plus 16 plus, yeah, plus 16 of these, so that's, yeah, 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 okay. Well, damn, okay, and then I need more of these as well, because I need 8 of those in that case. Uh, I guess it's no difference if I use the extruder or just make it with the plates. So th this recipe is 6 to 1 and this recipe is 6 to 1. What about the tiny ones? Three to one. And three to one. Yeah, same thing again. So, no dif no difference, really. Let's see. How, how many things can I make? And how many things do I need to make? So, four of these. That's going to need four HV machine casings. There you go. 32 machine hulls. HV machine hulls. Uh, from these, I need... What else do I need here? Pipes. Just the pipes. And I will need eight of these large ones. There you go. So I can make four of these large chemical reactors. Nice, nice. Oh, there you go. What is this? A quest. A quest. A oh, multi-block goals. Ah, yeah, the large chemical reactor. Okay. Yeah, tired of using small cells to process chemicals? Build a large chemical reactor and you can just pipe in and out fluids. Or use the glorious large fluid cells to deliver or, and remove fluids from the hatches. There are also, speci uh, also recipes specific only to the LC LCR, sometimes even allowing you to skip a step. So keep, uh, keep, keep, keep your eyes open for that. Additionally, as a multi-block, LCR also counts as a clean room for any clean room recipes. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, so you'll need like maintenance hatches, energy hatches, input bus, output bus, stuff like that, right? Yeah, yeah, so in between episodes, I did make a bunch of these uh, over here. You can see I've made a bunch of maintenance ha maintenance hatches, muffler hatches, output buses, input buses, output hatches, and input hatches. So I have eight of each. Should be should mean that I can make eight machines, except for the HV uh, energy hatches. So I only have six of those. Not great in that regard, but 
Eh, it should be fine. Uh, I, I can make more, definitely. It's just a bit of a hassle. <laughs> so, so for the actual chemical reactors, you will need um, a bunch of these chemically inert machine casings. I don't know how specifically how many I'll need for four. So I think I will just... Uh, I need to do math. I don't want to do math. <laughs> I think I need to do math. Yeah, let's just keep making stuff, I guess. Let's just keep making more more, more, more of the things I need. Uh, so one of the things is uh, the PTFE casing thingies. There we go. Okay, it seems like... Yeah, there we go. Two stacks of ender fluid conduits. Ender fluid conduit. This is amazing. I've, I'm so happy about this. Can't wait to actually use them. So that you you're gonna see how how useful that this is this is gonna come in handy like this is gonna be amazing. So I need some as rods. I need eight as rods. This and rod shape. And then I need normal pipe shape. Normal pipe with forty eight. And I just wait for these to get done. Yep, sixteen of these and sixteen of these. What else do I need? Okay, I need to make these boxes. That's four of these boxes, nice. And then these casing thingies, that's four of these pipe casing thingies. Now, the rest of the things I just need is chemically inert machine casings, which is molten polytetrafluoroethylene. So I do need to melt some of this back down that I made into plates. So can't just uh, keep all of it as plates. Uh, but I think this should be plenty to actually make everything I need. If I do, if I, if I scroll up and make it a 64 here, that means uh 96 so like that which means i won't be able to do two stacks because then i don't have uh, enough here maybe i just make a stack at first I'll, I'll just do a stack that might be enough for four reactors we'll see to make 64 of these you need 64 steel and you just need a lot of steel basically for these and there's no difference if you do it manually or with the assembler, but with the assembler, you don't use a tool. So I think I will do this. There you go. Chuck these in here. They should get made into steel frame boxes. Okay, 64 of these. Circuit one. Plus some steel plates. And there we go. That was the last one. A stack of these. Now... To make the chemically inert stuff, you need the molten PTFE and and just the assembler on circuit 6. So I think I can just put this on 6, put the casings in here, and I just need to melt down this stuff. Uh, fluid extractor. I need a fluid extractor, which I have one here. That's pretty good. Should be able to just do that, right? Yeah. Okay. And that was the last one. Just grab a cell. Put it over here. And there we go. Starts to craft. Making chemically inert machine casings. Nice. Just wait for these to get done now. Okay, let's see. Did I do my math right? Is this gonna work? Nice. Nothing left over. Perfect. And just a stack of chemically inert machine casings. Nice. So this should be everything. Oh yeah, I also need copper nickel coil blocks. So grab some of these. So now I can do some planning about where I want to put stuff and how I want to do this. Um, hmm. So if the super tanks are over here and I need chemical reactors somewhere, I could put them on this wall here, I suppose. I think that would work. So this is kind of interesting because I think you can also wall share the blocks for large chemical reactors. But my thing is, I don't know specifically how you can wall share them. Like, wh which which things work and which things don't. So it's going to be a bit of trial and error, I suppose. Does this one need a, a muffler hatch? It doesn't say anything about muffler hatches. I guess this one doesn't need muffler hatches. That's interesting. Also, I can claim some uh, stuff here. Either 16 large PTFA fluid pipes, which I guess I need more to make more of these reactors. Either I do that, or stainless steel fluid cells, which can hold 64 liters. 64 liters, that's a lot, yeah. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll consider this. Um, yeah. I suppose this backside works for that, yeah. I, I suppose I can put them here. And then this can get ripped out and uh, moved somewhere else as well. 
or like removed just in general. Okay, so this needs to be inset like the same way everything else is inset. This one wouldn't be inset just three blocks. It would, this would, I mean, the the whole thing would be inset, and uh, I don't know about the spacings for things. So let's just open this area up a bit. Okay, so. Uh, the first reactor, let's say, is gonna go, uh, here, I wanna say, maybe here. This is gonna be the controller. The controller is always on the second layer here, I think. And then the casing thingy goes for over there. The way I'd make this, uh, polytetrafluorethylene, the way you make it, is you have one reactor that has this, and then extra oxygen. Uh, where's one? This and oxygen, that's going to be the last one, the last reactor here. Um, but before that, I have one which combines two chemicals here that themselves need one reactor to make. So this reactor here to make tetrafluoroethylene is going to be in the middle of two other ones. And I think I should be able to even use the input-output buses, I mean uh, input-output hatches for fluids to go from one machine straight into the next machine, uh, even while using the same blocks. I think it could work. I, I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know how this works. It's going to be tricky to figure out. Um, I might do like uh, snap, like, like, like snapshot updates uh, about like making stuff instead of doing the whole building process, because I think that's going to be quite uh, hard to show. But the actual like... Yeah, yeah, I'll just do like snapshots of like, hey, I figured this out. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be back when, when, when something happens, I guess. Okay, so, so far, I've, I think this layout might work, like so. Um, so the TFE, which isn't the poly one yet, so I'll need to add oxygen to this afterwards. Need to move it somewhere, but, uh, so the TFE itself. You need, you need chloroform and hydrofluoric acid. And each one of these recipes requires two fl two gases or two fluids or whatever, right? Two chemicals. And so, if I just uh, have another chemical reactor here, so this one's going to be for hydrofluoric acid, making it, and then immediately putting it into a bus here that goes into the this, this chemical reactor stuff, uh, inputs, so... Output from this one into this one's inputs immediately. I think that should work, if I'm not mistaken. I really hope so. I really, really hope so. But yeah, and then the chloroform is the same thing. You just make it here and then push it in here. And then this is going to have this output bus, like, output uh, hatch for fluids. Move it somewhere else. And then I have, like, a third chemical reactor maybe on this side here as an extra thing. Which, I mean, maybe you can even stack them upwards. I don't know. I don't know if you can stack them, like... I don't know if you can stack them like this. I'm not sure. But uh, I think I want to put the energy hatches below. So that I can access it from... You know, just give it power from below. I think that's going to be fine. Going to be a bit nicer. I guess I could show off the idea here. Um, and see if it works afterwards. <laughs> so this is the idea. I have an output hatch that is in this machine right here. And I give it a filter for locked fluid. I give it a filter so nothing else can go in here. Except for the... Um, Except for the output from this machine, right? And then I have an input, uh, input hatch that I put over here and I turn it this way. So it's facing that. So only from, from this one can go into here and I do the same thing where I like, uh, wait, I can't lock this one, but it's an input, input hatch. Yeah, that, that doesn't matter. So this fluid is going to go in here. And then this machine, this, this, this large chemical reactor should be able to see, oh, I have this input here. And I have uh, the same thing on this side, and I can make the output, and then you just output the chemical output thing. So, and then just put it like on the back, maybe, and just export it over there, or put it on top, M maybe even like this. Uh, make it make it look like this, and then face it upwards, and then just m pipe it over to the next chemical reactor, which I might even just put sh while share with these as well, because then that, that just makes sense, I think, while sharing as much as you can. Yeah. I think that makes sense. I'll just, uh, just put, put all the things down and see if I can figure it out. <laughs> like, d Okay, so does this one have circuits? It does have circuits. How do you even put in the circuits, though? Where does the circuit go? Large chemical reactor itself does not have a circuit. 
The input hatch does not have a circuit. So do I need an input, an item thingy for it? Wait. So input bus is only if the recipe has an item input. Okay. But you don't need it. That's the thing. You don't need it specifically. So I, I feel like I'll just make it and see what happens. Uh, <laughs> I'll just make it and see what happens. That's, uh, that's, that's cool. Okay. Let's see this and that and that and that and that and all of this. Okay, so has it formed all the all the things? Yep, this one just needs maintenance, maintenance, and maintenance, and I can do that like so. Everything should be happy. No. I right click with the toolbox. What do you mean? Wait, this is an incomplete structure. What? Oh yeah, right. Um, I forgot. <laughs> This is important. You can't just skip this. Yeah, so the very, very top here is the copper nickel coils. There we go. And now it should be all complete structures, right? Yay, there we go. All these are happy. And I should be able to do some stuff. Should be able to manually put in some fluids to see if it actually works the way I want it to. So, uh, first of all, I need to give it power, right? Uh... How do I do that? Here. Uh, cable, wire cutters, there we go. Like so. Okay, so that should be power for these figured out. So what's the easiest one that I can test right now? Uh, fluorine and hydrogen probably. So hydrofluoric is going to be easy. So if I go into the input hatches here, uh, is it possible to set a specific filter? No, you just put in the fluid and that's it. Um, that's fine, I suppose. Fluid and fluid. And it's, I mean, I guess, moment of truth, and let's see if it works. No valid recipe. So, yeah, this shows I need a circuit for it. How do I give it a circuit when there's no thing that can accept a circuit? I'm confused. Maybe I do need an item, uh, like an in item input thingy. So, um, what's a good location? I suppose over here. Yeah. If I put it here. And then just like rotate it downwards or something so that it doesn't work. And then I give it circuit one. Because that's that's the one I needed, right? Yeah, this is a circuit one with uh, hydrogen and fluorine. And I have hydrogen and... Oh no, it did... Wait, wait, wait. It did it already. It did it so fast I didn't realize. Uh, and I can't really get access to see the other one. That's an issue. Oh. Ah, I see. <laughs> so it, it did go in here. I mean, I'll just remove this for now. It did put the hydrofluoric in here. Okay, so this one works. That's, I figured it out. Okay, great. Drop back here. Let's put the chlorine in this one. Put the methane in this one. Okay, it has the circuit. I want to see it actually running now. Can I see the machine running? It doesn't show up. Okay, what's the... Not enough fluid output space. Oh. Oh, oh, wait. Oh, yeah, this is the one that makes hydrochloric as well. Okay. Ah, uh, I see. Now, that's a bit of an issue. Yes, I need to... I need to have another output hatch for fluids. And this one is gonna go... Here at the top, I think, like so. Okay, so can it do the craft now? I think it did the crafts already, right? This is empty. So yeah, I put the hydrochloric in here. I, I think I like I like this position for it. And then the other chemical should have gone in here. This one doesn't need doesn't need a circuit, so I just turn this on, right? Yay, there we go. Making tetrafluoroethylene. And it's done. And that and the fluid should have gone right here. It did not. Uh oh. Oh, I think I know what happened here. Oh, well, first of all, hydrochloric acid is uh, in here, which is bad. Don't want hydrochloric in here. 
Wait, does making does making this produce another chemical? No, it's just wait. Oh god damn it. This one also makes hydrochloric. So I'm gonna change this up a bit. Bake this out. Locked fluid is going to be hydrochloric for this one. Okay, so these output hatches and input hatches, uh, I think these output hatches need to be filtered because otherwise stuff like this can happen uh, where the the TFE machine makes hydrofluoric acid, hydrochloric acid as a byproduct and then this clogs up this system. So that's a bit of an issue. And I need to lock the fluid here for the uh, chloroform. Should be able to just drag that here. Like, there you go. Chloroform. And this one is going to have hydrochloric. Hydrofluoric, I mean. Yeah. And then this should be fine. This should be fine. If I understand it correctly, it should be fine. Okay, this is looking good. Looking good so far. What else do I need? What what, what else do I need to, to pro progress? Okay, so I suppose one thing I could do is bring, like oxygen and hydrogen and stuff to these super tanks since i'm gonna need uh, some basic chemicals over here to make this so i think uh, i think that's smart so i have done a bit of ender io piping as you can see <laughs> yeah i don't know how to show this actually what's the best way to show this so i have decided that a in these pipes I'm going to pull from these super tanks with uh, the blue channel and I'm going to push into these with the green channel. So if I have any output from a chemical reactor, let's say, I set it up to be green channel on extract, always active, and it's going to push into any available tank and all of them have filters. So this one's filtered to insert on green on water. This one's only for oxygen. This one's only for hydrogen. And so so on and so forth. The fluids just search for any possible spot that they can go into the ender IO pipes. And whenever you extract over here, I'm extracting, let's say on blue here. Um, I'm always extracting on blue on all of these. And whenever I have a machine that needs something, let's say this one here, this one needs hydrogen. So I set up an insert on blue and filter for hydrogen. So nothing else is ever going to get pushed into this except for hydrogen. So the only thing is whenever setting up a machine, I need to be pretty careful to first set the whitelist and then set the insert on a specific channel like blue. Since uh, otherwise there might be some issues because it might like fill it up with some random stuff. That, that That's the only problem really. Uh, and over here in this setup I have... Uh, there is a purple channel used as well, since this is uh, just the, the TFE, not the PTFE, right? So I only need this one to get moved over to this one. There's just one place it needs to go to. There's no other use for it except for this. So I set up the filter for this output hatch here, so nothing else can get put in here except for the TFE. Um, and then the purple channel pulls it out. And then also here I put even a whitelist for this specifically. Just in case I ever forget and use the purple channel for for something again, you know, <laughs> in case that happens, I set up a whitelist for this one, and yeah, that's that's that. Um, I did set up the the fourth machine here just for the PTFE. So now this is four full chemical reactors, <laughs> full large chemical reactors, just ready to make PTFE. Um, the only things I do need to prepare still, like I have all the oxygen and everything hooked up, so I'm. Um, I'm pulling from over there. I have the oxygen and hydrogen set up. So I'm pulling pulling these from these pipes here. Uh, also, extracting green, everything. And then you can see at the front here, this is this is how it's looking so far. I have water, I have oxygen, hydrogen. Uh, steam isn't hooked up yet. Chlorine, I'm pulling from over there where I have my ore processing. All the way back there. I have set up a PTFE one for like whenever I have it done. <laughs> uh, and then hydrochloric acid, which is uh, like a byproduct from making all of this, which I might eventually also electrolyze to get back chlorine and hydrogen. I might, I'm not sure. It's it's like, it's like weird. I don't know if I need to yet. So um, 
but I think it does produce quite a lot of it, and this is something that is also used for other chemical setups, so I might I might just, might just keep it, right? So yeah, that's that's the way this is working so far, and yeah, and for those that aren't set, like it's for those that don't have a filter yet, I just moved the insert to like brown, which is completely nothing, so that I can do the whitelist and then move it back to, to, to green, so yeah. All the fluids are going to be on one system now. And eventually, I plan on putting all the fuel and everything as well on this. So that <laughs> I won't even need... I won't even need, like, potent pipes ever. I, I will just use ender IO pipes for, like, moving stuff around. Because it's going to literally be every single pipe possible at, at once. Since you can just set filters and stuff. It's amazing. It's so amazing. Because, like, just look here. This is, this is, what, this is what I can see... Like, all the contents for the channels. It's amazing. Well, now that this is set up, um, I just need the a couple of the base thingies. Like, I'm not making methane right now. And I am not making... Uh, no, I have chlorine. I have a lot of chlorine. I'm not making methane. That was the thing. Yeah. And to make methane is a chemical reactor with hydrogen and carbon on circuit one. So, I think I'll just make this one fluorine and the way you get fluorine is a electrolyzer with cryolite if i remember correctly ah yes there we go this one save that so i need an electrolyzer and i need a let's do an h3 one and i need for the methane you need a normal chemical reactor yeah just two more machines two more machines and i'm set i'm done Okay, so the chemical reactors. Can I can I do the electrolyzer? I can. And can I make the chemical reactor? Nope, I need the steel thingy, so... Okay, there we go. That's the chemical reactor as well. And now I just need to figure out how to hook this up. Like, if I, if I try and put them here, it's going to be really cramped. And there's not going to be good, like, enough space, I think. Um... So, I think just on that side is going to make more sense. And I want to do something like this. I think this could work, right? Uh, so, this one is going to need carbon as an input. And this one is going to need cryolite. The methane was the chemical reactor. Electrolyzer, so chemical methane is carbon. And that one's that one, yeah. Uh, conveyor module, conveyor module. Can I do that? Yeah. Then output on that side automatically. It should be pulling from here. It should be able to do that. There we go. It is. Yeah. Okay. So it has the cryolite. This one just needs electricity and is going to be producing the, the fluorine. And this one is going to need uh, another gas as well, right? This one's going to need um, hydrogen here. Okay. Oh, I just thought of something. How do I power this, actually? So if I do something like this, both of these are going to get powered. Then I can go around the bottom. Of course, there's a pipe here. Uh. Okay, nice. So this goes down... I forgot to hook this one up actually, so good that I good that I wanted to hook this up. Convenient. I'm almost out of the yellow cave spray can. Okay, put this back. So now both of these have power. This one's already starting, it's making fluorine. I will hook up the I guess it's gonna go here. And yeah, here. So this one's going to be an interesting one because I can actually input and output with the same ender IO pipe. This is just amazing. Um, and then this one's going to go like that, like that, like that. And like that. And it uses up the full stack. So I have one whole stack left over still. Um, I'm feeling good about that. So where does the, where's the, where does the fluorine need to go? Uh... Yeah, flooring goes here. Uh, I'll set up a new channel for this one as well. I guess I'll just do purple. 
That's like the third one or something, you know? That's like the, the third unique channel you need. And this one's gonna extract on purple. Turn this off, set this to purple, extract. And now it should be going in here, right? Yes. Uh, okay, so the flooring is set up. The bright light's here, that goes into here, okay. Uh, then this one uh, needs hydrogen, right? Yeah, this one needs hydrogen. So on the insert, filter hydrogen, insert. And on the extract, well, it's going to be on blue here on insert and extract on green, always active. And it's going to pull out whatever this was, methane, right? Oh, well, methane is going to need to go not on the green one, actually. I'll set it up on the purple one, I guess, as well. Because I don't think, well, yeah, methane, I think methane was another one of those things that you don't really need anywhere else. That was, that was a thing. So methane goes here, right? Yeah, methane is here and it's going to be set to purple. Like so. I think it doesn't let uh, stuff go in unless I configure it. Yeah. Now it's actually accepting hydrogen here. And this is a chemical reactor with circuit 1. Do that. And it's loud. Muffler upgrades. Very nice. And there we go. It's making the stuff and it's also pulling it away. Hydrogen should be going there now. I mean, uh, methane. Yeah. And now it's also doing the crafts. And it's crafting stuff right I'm, i should be slowly making yeah like this is like flickering on and off now this one should start uh producing and this one should start producing so eventually i should be able to see ptfe start building up here it's not 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 quite there yet but eventually i don't know really what the bottleneck here would be i guess it kind of is the methane right yeah I'm hoping everything works, and there's no issues. Once I have some, uh, some PTFE, then I'm happy. Oh, okay, what is this one? Not enough fluid output space. So I'm guessing it's made enough hydrofluoric, but, uh... Yeah, because this one's full. Now, does that mean... Um... Okay, I need to test something, I need to see. Okay, there's nothing here, so I should be able to take this one out and check. Okay, that is correct, right? No, this is an input hatch. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, 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 this was from before, I think. That was, that was the issue, it was, it's from before. Yeah, this one can only be hydrochloric, hydrofluoric acid. Okay, and the other one here? Is this one correct? Chloroform, yeah. It should be fine now, it should be fine. Okay, now it's making tetra... Yeah, yeah, okay. Tetrafluoroethylene. This one's gonna be done soon. Yeah, there you go. And now this one should also start working eventually. Because, of course it is, right? Oh, this is nice. You can see them, like, flickering on and off. I like this. This is really cool. I just want to see the actual end product. Like, I just want to see it actually make the... BTFE itself, because right now it's still empty here, so something, something's up, I don't know it has that it has oxygen oh, this one probably needs a circuit, right? yeah, yeah, maybe I just haven't set the circuit yet yeah, I haven't set the circuit um, so this one is a oxygen, so yeah, circuit 1 set circuit 1 okay, there we go, it's making it, nice Okay, so now if I go over here, I should start seeing it fill up the PTFE as well. There we go. Molten polytetrafluoroethylene fully automated. Let's go. Okay, well now it's yeah stalling because I don't have enough generators. <laughs> Which is not great. Um, yeah, these ones are running a lot. Uh-huh. And I think none of my chemical reactors need like void. Because if I void anything here, that is going to be bad, I think. Um, there's no resource, really, that could bottleneck my, my production for anything else. Um, except for, maybe, this one here, the hydrochloric. I could set it to overflow void here. Because I don't really know if I care enough to recycle all of it right now. 
because the chlorine is basically just salt. So it's really not that big a deal. I can just do that. And because uh, if this fills up, then everything else stops. This is the only byproduct I'm making from the system, which is, yeah. And there we go. You can see my oxygen's full up. This one's still filling up slowly, but surely taking from there. And yeah, chlorine. Very nice. Um, and I think I, now I just want to make this look prettier, right? So I can put them some uh, facades over here. Uh, do that. Okay, something like this. Uh, it's not nothing really crazy. I don't want to go crazy on the decoration here. Uh, since, I mean, eventually I want to move bases. Uh, so, like, it's weird. It's weird. Like, I, I want to move bases eventually, so it's kind of kind of weird planning for long-term stuff, right? Uh -huh. So, I don't know. So, what's happening now? This is full up with methane. I want to see. Is it still, like, producing or has it stopped because of something? Okay, now this is worrying me because all of the... All of these are full up, but it's not processing more tetrafluoroethylene. So what's the issue? Uh, did that stop the craft itself? Yeah. How did this one stop even before? Oh, is it because it ran out of electricity? Because these ones were forcing it, them to stall? Is that it? If it runs out, oh, if it runs out, it actually stops working. Okay. So I need more combustion generators. Okay. Good to know. You should probably set up like a battery thing actually for it. Um, instead of, instead of just more combustion generators, I should like take a couple batteries from here and make, uh, make some more batteries even. Damn, this takes a really, really, really long time to do. Wow. One of these battery buffers. Okay. Yeah, so I need to remove this one here, let's say. Put a battery buffer here. Hook it up into that side. And put the batteries in here. So this one should start uh, charging up the stuff, I think. Okay, maybe six batteries is going to be enough. Alright, so... These are all charged up, so that's six batteries. Uh, now to see how this is going to work. I think only this one needs to be turned on. Everything else was running already. Yeah, all of these are on. And now I want to see if the batteries are going to start draining at all, even. Because I, I suspect they would not, because... <laughs> the, the, the the power draw from this system is not a constant like two or four amps it's it's a it's a it's a it's a changing amount i think right sometimes you need all of it sometimes you need just a bit because mm. like these ones i guess these ones are most of the time going to be running because they're making more fluorine and making more methane so these ones might be kind of an issue maybe but the the other ones like like the the one for chloroform and the one for hydrofluoric acid. They're not running all the time. Like, I don't know, actually. <laughs> I don't know. Let, let's see. Let's see. Is it is it draining more? It does drain. Oh. So I do need another generator. At least another one, right? So let's do two, maybe. This is going to be enough. Do that. Connect that. Connect that. Let's see. Is it going to be going upwards now? It's standing still. How is this possible? It's like not going up, not going down. Is it actually perfectly balanced now? But like the, 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 the draw is like changing all the time, right? Like there's no way it's actually standing still. It's, it's on 72%. It's on this specific amount of EU, and it's stable. That's wild. Okay. So maybe I just didn't even need the batteries. Oh, boy. Well, damn. It's a bit awkward. Oh, well. Whatever. I feel like there's gonna be some time when something turns off. But anyways, uh, let's see. So, PDFE. So, 67 buckets here. And it keeps making more. Nice, nice. 
I think I think this is pretty good. This is pretty good. Make me this whole setup for like processing fluids basically. Um and now I now I have basically unlimited access to more ender fluid conduits. I mean, they are a bit expensive because I showed you like the the, the process uh, the processing line to get to that is uh, quite annoying because you need a lot of weird stuff. Uh, like energetic alloys like conductive iron and then like black steel and black steel is like copper and gold and silver and nickel and steel and so yeah now now that I have uh, that I have I have access to basically infinite amounts of ender fluid conduits and with these setting up new chemicals is going to be really really easy considering I can just uh, do channel like ba basically I, I make one chemical once and then I can reuse it anywhere in my base when it's needed and then if i make a new chemical i can hook it up to the super super tanks here and just uh just reuse it this is amazing this is like a, a very very simplified uh, emmy system basically i would say like the p2p tunnels but just ender io <laughs> i really like ender io this is so so much like potential i would say the next thing i want to do uh and i think i'll do it next episode because it is it is uh getting quite long for me uh at this point i don't know how short the video is going to be but uh i think i'll do the distillation tower next episode i think uh since it is going to require quite a lot of rebuilding stuff and making more chemical reactors so yeah i will, I, will I, it, I might even need to do multiple distillation towers to do that if i'm not mistaken um it's, it's gonna be tricky, I think. It's gonna be tricky, but uh, I'll definitely do it. I'll definitely do it because the, the, the value you get from it is just insane. So, my plan for next episode, I think, is just to rip all of this out completely. All of it. Just rip it out and just replace it with uh, HP machines. Oh! Yeah. So, then another thing I wanted to do. So, I have the tanks here on this side. And then, I think I want, uh, I want to have, like, fluid solidifiers on this side that uh i have like a buffer basically like ptfe for example ptv ptfe pipes like i have like 64 just in a in a thing or maybe even a, in a barrel that like can store like maybe eight stacks or something so that uh i have a backup always ready of uh specific pipes this seems good seems good to do that i think i, I think i think i think that's it for this episode i hope you enjoyed it the, the chemical the chemical stuff it takes a while to make though like, it takes a while to figure out with the placement for everything, so I, I, I hope you enjoy this still, nonetheless. Uh, I did set up a thing on YouTube. Uh, you, there's YouTube memberships, and if, if you, if you, if you want to support me, then that will be greatly appreciated as well. But, um, but only, if you, only if you can afford it. Don't, don't like spend money that you don't even have. Um, if, if you, if you want to support me, just watch the video, leave a like, subscribe, comment, uh, share the video. It's all free, so. I set up the option in case somebody like really wants to support the content you know there's some there's some perks you can get uh i, I set up uh, like you can watch the videos early if you want there's uh like custom badges uh, on youtube like you, the comments are going to show up of uh, your top top of the list or something like that and another thing yeah in discord uh you can get like a custom custom role i guess yeah in discord so that you have like a custom color and everything if you want uh yeah and uh, that's it I uh, hope you enjoyed the episode, and bye!